Hello and welcome. Dave and Joan Maroney here, your Mother of Mercy Messengers. You have joined us for another Divine Mercy Prayer Meeting and Holy Hour of Adoration for our nation. Today is January 5th, Friday, January 5th. It's first Friday, and what a blessing to be here with you during this novena for our country. Um, the series is entitled Mama Mary Stories. We're spending each day of these nine days talking about our Blessed Mother, her various apparitions throughout the world, and the incredible ways she has impacted history and lives and brought healing and brought warning. And we would be remiss at, at this particular time in history, we did not discuss one of the most incredible um, apparitions of Our Lady ever in the small little village, the hamlet of Garabandal, Spain. And with us today is Ted Flynn from Signs and Wonders. Ted has been our guest before. We've been blessed. He and his wife, Maureen, uh, have spoken about Garabandal and all kinds of things in the church for decades and decades. They have really paved the way. We salute you, Mr. Flynn, for the work that you have done. Amen. And for how many souls you have led to Christ and build our faith and knowledge. And we're very excited because Ted has got a brand new book that just went to print yesterday. And he's here to tell us not just about the book, but the content and why it is so important for us to know this message and to embrace it and share it with others. Uh, Dave, let's pray a Hail Mary, and then we're going to turn it over to you, Ted. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In the name of the, the Father, Father, Son, Son and, the Holy and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Ted, it's all yours. <laughs> well, where would you like me to start? because I've been around this now since 1984, so I could speak nonstop in a cross-country trip from Baltimore, <laughs> Maryland to San Diego, California. You know what, Ted? I think the message that we've been giving this novena is about Our Lady, but how as a good mother, and I read she comes to warn us and uh, to, to make us ready to, to open our eyes to what's going on, and then when we fail to heed these warnings, all different kinds of warnings, how these, she is there to help us pick up the pieces and put everything back together. We're really trying to present to everybody that heaven is here with us. This is part of God's plan. And as things, as we were saying earlier, as, 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 as our culture, uh, I said, what did I call it? Des is on a des De decelerate, but I think you mean spiral down. Spirals yeah. downward. There's another word, yeah. Yeah, descalating, I said. <laughs> Descalate. <laughs> going down, down. What can we do? And Our Lady of Garabandal comes Amen. with the message and the plan. So maybe for a lot of people, because it's not just the people who have joined us here live, they're tuning in on YouTube and Rumble, and they might not know anything about Garabandal. So maybe give a brief history of what happened and then what we have to look forward to. Well, it's it's been now since 1961. Maybe we'll try to do it from the, the macro to the micro on what's actually, and then maybe try to interject what heaven's plan is for the whole thing. And the important question that people have to ask about Garabandal is why then and why now? Why was it happening then and why is it, why are people interested in it now? And, and if you really look at that, these are modern day epistles, whether it's Fatima, Lourdes, La Salette, Pont Maine, Guadalupe, you know, Rue de Bac, what, whatever, you could look at all of the apparitions. Now, you know, a person could not know any apparitions or be aware of them and literally sit at the right hand of the father if they've led a very virtuous life. But what this, what these apparitions are, this is heaven sending us like in the form of a modern day epistle to where what these what these apparitions are about is they're informing us what heaven's agenda is now and what's what they want us to do it's like paul going from colossi to galatia to rome you know to philippi and to the different cities informing the people for an instruction in the faith because what heaven is doing 
these are love letters to humanity. You have to look at this in a very macro way. This is heaven sending us a gift. That's what these apparitions are in world history. And so the Blessed Mother came to a place in Garabandal, Spain. It's northwest. It's actually sent near about 45 minutes from Santander, which is a major city in northern Spain. And it's actually the third stop on the Camino of Santiago. It's it's one it, the Camino is 514 miles from from France all the way to Santiago. And the third major stop in this route is Santander. So there's even a history of, of, of in essence, holiness in, in Northern Spain. So I actually got in, into the book. It's called Garabandal, The Warning and the Great Miracle. And the subtitle is, is um, uh, an event that will correct the conscience of the world. And so this is a gift par excellence. And when Sister Lucy was leaving to, uh, uh, to go into the convent in 1921 from Fatima, she stopped at the Cova. And in, in 21, uh, 1921, the very last uh, apparition that Lucy had where the Blessed Mother came to her uh, in 1921, 40 years to the day and the hour, the uh, Blessed Mother came to Garabandal, Spain. So the Blessed Mother came there, and there was a. Uh, they had been saying uh, the Rosary uh, publicly. They had been ringing the bell every day for the Angelus at noon for several hundred years. This is very, very important. That there, it's a lot like Medjugorje in that it was very, very simple. Um, in in many respects, you could say it's even primitive because in 1961, when the Blessed Mother came there, there was literally not even a, a motor with a moving part. Think of that. We had already put a man on the moon in 1969 and brought him home, brought them home safely. Um, and uh, Garabandal literally didn't have a motor with a moving part in 1961. And Conchita and the girls would actually uh, work with the hay using a scythe. So it was very simple. It wasn't, it was primitive in many respects, but it was just a simple, simple lifestyle. In Northern Spain is where the sanctity of Spain, um, St. Dominic was from Northern Spain, St. Ignatius of Loyola was from Northern Spain. You had Navarre with a, a, a Catholic university. The seminaries were up in Northern Spain and it was more conservative in that Basque area where Barcelona and Madrid it, were, were the liberal cities. But the Blessed Mother came there in 1961 and she appeared 2000 times over four years and four months. People always speak about the four, four 61 to 65. But think uh, many of the apparitions, there were four girls, um, three of them, were uh, 11 and one was 12. Mary Cruz was 12 as the oldest. And so here the Blessed Mother comes and many of the apparitions lasted not just for minutes, but many times several hours and some of them all night long. And so what, what was happening, the Blessed Mother came as a mother. She instructed the kids. They talked about their life. They talked about village life. They talked about their families. And they became very much friends with Our Lady. It was very, very personal. And there were some very, very serious messages. It wasn't like Medjugorje where, you know, you've got these daily messages or weekly. I mean, Yvonne is, is still receiving messages and others. But there really weren't a tremendous number of public messages. And some of the messages, like the Night of Screams, these weren't released for months and months after of what the content was about. But what was said there was actually very, very profound when a message was released. So, um, you know, it, the first message was... Um, June, what not the, the first message, but in June 18th, the Archangel Michael came and there wasn't anything said 
And then there was about eight other times where Michael came and didn't say anything. And there was talk about that and people began to come, but nothing was said. And then, then the archangel literally said on July 1st that the Blessed Mother would come July 2 or the next day. And now that was actually on the Feast of the Visitation and in the old liturgical calendar, um, it was actually uh, the Feast of the Ark of the Covenant, which, you know, what is the Ark of the Covenant? Wherever Moses went with the Ark of the Covenant and his hands were held up by what became the Sanhedrin of uh, people supporting him, Moses never lost a battle. Moses and Joshua never lost a battle. And so what she was doing was coming for battle. And it's the first apparition in the, in the world where she came on a biblical name on the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, July 16th. And so, you know, she came wearing the rosary on her wrist. And so these, these things, what was said there, the thing that it's really known for in a very profound way is that the world would, re these are the main events that so many other things could be said that were miraculous and all sorts of things. But um, what it's principally known for is that there's going to be an, a, a warning of some sort. Now, there's several names for this. The word in Spanish is a viso. And so it's called an illumination of conscience or a judgment in miniature or a correction of conscience. They, in essence, mean the same thing. And there's been many, many people in church history that have spoken about this, especially over the last 200 years, people like Edmund Campion, Marie Esperanza, and I put those in the book, but I tried to stay true to just the message of Garabandal because there's no end of what you could get into of what others said. And I intentionally avoided that to just stay with the messages were from 1961 to 65 of what the Blessed Mother said would happen. So think of it that uh, every single person in the world will see the state of their soul as God would see them at judgment. And the people who have, you can, many people could call this a near death experience in NDE. It's much more profound than that. What, and I've spoken probably over the last 35 years to as many as 25 people from seminarians to priests, to businessmen, to law enforcement that have actually experienced this. And one man who I put in a film in 1995 called Dick Bingold, if anybody heard of it, because he's in a film I did called Prophecy in the New Times, where he had been, if anybody knew the film, The French Connection with Popeye Doyle, um, which was Gene Hackman in that role. He was Popeye Doyle's um, uh, police partner in New York City. And he had, this is his story. There's nothing out of school, even though he's died. But he tells the story of that when he, when he experienced the warning, he couldn't get off his kitchen floor for five hours. He was in tears. And what happened, he saw his life in like a continuum. And it's like a slow motion picture to where you see your life and where there's grievous sin, it goes slower. And they all say it seems like a long time, but in reality, it isn't. So think of like using your cell phone where you just, you know, you're flicking through your photos and you can go from one to the next. So you can think of the warning like that. And so uh, if, if you're in a state of virtue, it won't be as difficult. The, the warning is not a day of death, but some people may die from the fright of it, but generally it's not a day of death. And I think the people who are very well aware of the warning are by and large going to be like a lot of the Catholics listening to this right now. By and large, because it's marrying, you'll have a lot of other denominations who simply won't be open to it. Why? Because they haven't been open to any of the Marian messages before. But when this event happens, it's going to be so profound. Every single person who has experienced this in their life all say it's the most significant event, a human being, anything that can happen to them. 
It's nothing that they've ever experienced before. And it's so profound, it stays with you. And many times it takes some years to actually process what's actually happened. They don't even know how to put into words what's happened. I've, I've read about several people who have experienced it and they said they couldn't even tell their spouse because they thought they could have come across flaky and um, they just didn't even know how to explain it from a mystical or practical standpoint other than it happened. So then within one year, uh, there's a lot of anecdotal stories that have grown over the last 61 years, 62 years since this first started. And many of them, as I say, the tadpole has become a, uh, a blue whale that uh, you just said there were 69 people on this. So if I tell one person and the next tells another and another and it keeps going around the table, by the time the story gets back, to the original, it's not even recognizable in many respects. There's an element of that around the messages of Garabandal, due to, frankly, everybody with an internet connection at two in the morning with insomnia, where they're just writing things. And a lot of it is not what the original messages were or what the young girl said. So this is a love letter. And then within one year, from that to stay with the high point because time is short here. Within one year, there is going to be a miracle. Now there's less known, the only person who knew the year of the warning is Mary Lowley and she died in April of 2009 of lupus. And the only person in the world who knows the day of the warning is Conchita, who, who lives in New York City and it's never been released. You know, she's never announced it in eight days in advance. The uh, the miracle will be announced by her that it's going to be at Garabandal. And so we know certain things about it. There's actually in the book, there's as many as maybe 20 data points that we do know, but I can hit the majors. It's going to happen between the months of March, April, May or June. Now back to the anecdotal. Many people talk about it being in April. That was said by Maria Sirocco when she um, knew when Mary Lowley was in her home and it came out. Is it true? The answer is maybe, maybe not. Because one time on Irish TV, um, Conchita said as a young woman, March, April, May or June, I have the VHS tape of that. Another time she said April or May and another time March, April or May. So the answer is it's between the 18th and the 16th of a month. It happens on a Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Spanish time. It happens on the feast of a young Eucharistic martyr. I put several of the martyrs in the book of who many times have been candidates for this. But if you actually go back and look at this, how many young martyrs, a martyr of the Eucharist, in the in the in the definitive anthology of the Catholic Encyclopedia? How many people in the last two thousand years have been martyrs? The answer is nobody knows. There's just a ton of them, but it's it's not a very well known one. It doesn't say if it's a male or a female. And there's even talk that it could be Saint Stanislaus, who was young. Um, you've got St. Hermenengeld. Uh, so you've got, um, and then I put one in particular, Imelda Lambertini, who fits everything around the spirit of Garabandal, who died on March. for receiving the Eucharist. And it flew. She was so young, she wasn't allowed to receive it. She died at 12. And it, it flew right from the priest to her tongue. And then she died like Father Andreu did after he saw the miracle. And he goes, Milagro, Milagro, Milagro. Today is the happiest day of my life. And he just simply died in the car. So there's many, uh, the miracle is going to be a time of reunification in the church. The people who proof the book for me, and it was just printed yesterday and it's being shipped. The people who proofed the book for me, I was very encouraged. They actually saw the hope in the book. The book is very, very hopeful. And one person in particular said that 
um, she was very much anxious and filled with anxiety over the direction of the church and the culture and said she felt very, very hopeful after reading the book. Why? Because that's what Garabandal is. It's hopeful and God has a plan. What's actually happening now in our culture, heaven is exposing the evil as we're going to be transitioning to another era. Much like the in the time of Jesus, it went from a mosaic practice to a new dimension under the redemptive plan of Jesus Christ. And so we're moving. It's not the end of the world, as many detractors would say, but we it, it's coming into a new era, a new times, a new uh, a new Jerusalem. And they, in essence, mean the same thing: that the world is going to transition. And that's frankly what the triumph is about. So there's so many things we could talk about of what was said there, but we know that uh, from the apparitions that um, that the events would happen after a synod. We could get for you know 25 minutes just into that, but it doesn't say it has to happen immediately after. So it's not going to happen that the synod actually closes down. And the, for the third year of October 2024. And, um, you know, a lot of people will be looking for, you know, the events right after. I don't think it'll happen like that. But Conchita said to when she was 16 years old to uh, uh, her teacher when she was in boarding school in Burgos, Spain, that the miracle and the events would happen after a synod. And she didn't say a council, she said a synod. And this type of synod that we're having, in essence, going out to every single parish in the world listening, and we just had what's called the, the continental phase two months ago in Rome, where hundreds and hundreds of bishops met at tables for 10 talking about the direction of the church. And the next synod in 2024 is going to be called the universal. So it went from local to continental to universal. And so there's also the prophecy of a pope going to Moscow. There was a lot of speculation that that could happen several months ago with Pope Francis wanted to refuel in Moscow on his way to Mongolia. But that never, ever came out from Rome that came out in a Russian newspaper called TASS. So I didn't think it would happen and it didn't. And the Pope was asking to refuel specifically as a pretense so he could meet with Patriarch Kirill in Moscow, because that's one of the conditions that when the Pope comes back from Moscow, um, Russia, uh, there would be conflict in the world, specifically in Europe, that Russia would roll over Europe. So, and there were a lot of speculation that this could happen, but I think we're kind of at the 20 minutes. So I think that's enough for now, correct? Oh, I hate, yes. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh. um, we'll have to come back after the holy hour because we're here to to pray and do what Our Lady said, as, as Ted said, when she appeared in Garabandal, she had the rosary around her wrist. And to remember that, uh, I like what you said, Garabandal is a bright spot for many. It provides a vision of a bright future for mankind, bringing restoration to the brokenness of the world. And key to that is our response and doing what our mother had said to pray the rosary, spend time with Jesus in the blessed sacrament. The Lord told St. Faustina, whose country was on the verge of World War II, to pray a novena, the litany of the saints, and also a novena, the chaplet of divine mercy. And so many blessings came to that country, although it suffered terribly, terribly, terribly during World War II, worse than any other European country. Um, you know, the, the whole divine mercy message and the message of mercy is what allowed these people to be able to pick themselves up and continue on and to be now uh, one of the greatest pro-life nations in the world and Catholic nations in the world. So let's pray and then we'll come back to Ted. We're going to go to Vilnius, Lithuania. i share with you on the screen. This is a perpetual adoration chapel there, the city where St. Faustina met with Blessed Father Michael Sapochko to have and the image painted of Divine Mercy 
that Jesus had requested a few years before that was finally painted. And what you see there in the chapel is that original painting painted by Eugene Kazmierowski in this Adoration Chapel. It is a live feed. It's just after midnight in Vilnius. And Lord, here we are to join with you as you have requested, as you had directed us to adore you, to plead for mercy upon the whole world, to thank you for the abundant blessings. Thank you for your mother. Thank you for St. Joseph, all the saints and angels that, that lead us and pray for us and guide us. We're going to begin this time of prayer, making a spiritual communion. St. Faustina was told to receive Holy Communion for nine days on behalf of her country. We encourage all of you, do this whenever you can. Set time aside. It's a new year. See if you can go to Mass nine days in a row. Make your best effort. But when you receive that Holy Communion, you put Jesus inside of you. Ask him to bless our country, your country, your family. Um, but now, since we're here meeting via, via Zoom on the Internet, we can do so by uniting ourselves spiritually through the spiritual communion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We turn our attention to our Lord Jesus, truly present in the Eucharist on the altar. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And Jesus, wherever two or more are gathered in your name, you are there. So you are here with us, even though we are spread out, but we are together. We are coming here to be with you, Jesus, in your name, gathering in your name. So now we turn to your Immaculate Mother, the Virgin Queen of Heaven, Blessed Mother. We pray the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary. O oh Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. For our Holy Father, the Pope, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For an increase in faith, hope, and charity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now Ted will announce the mysteries and, and uh, 
recite the beginnings of the prayer, and we have responding for decade one, Rita Flock. Decade two is Mary Kay. Decade three is Allison. Decade four, Eileen. Decade five is Wheezy. Okay, Ted. The first sorrowful mystery is the agony in the garden. And as his sweat became as drops of blood running down upon the ground and rising from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, worn out by grief. Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us, us this day of daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ted, in I know it's uh, you know customary just to to say the prayer, but uh, if you'll let the the person respond for the second part. Oh, okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. So I think yep. you can begin with the first uh, Hail Mary now. And oh, okay. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Do I do the first part of every one? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. oh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well beloved spouse. The second sorrowful mystery is the scourging at the pillar. Pilate then took Jesus and had him scourged. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all Especially those in most need of thy mercy. Come, Holy Spirit. Come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. The third sorrowful mystery is the crowning with thorns. And they stripped him and they put on him a scarlet cloak, made a crown of thorns. They put it on his head in a red reed, in a reed into his right hand. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sin. Save us from the cries of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. The fourth sorrowful mystery is the carrying of the cross. And bearing the cross for himself, he went forth to the place called the skull in Hebrew, Golgotha. And we pray specifically for the carrying of the cross, for every cross that people are carrying here, that God hears their heart and their prayer is answered. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. The fifth is the crucifixion. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he expired. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. <clears throat> blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Do I do the Hail Holy Queen? Sure. Dave? Dave? Sure, yes. Okay. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of te tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, then eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, shown unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy the promises of Christ. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And for the intentions of our Holy Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now the prayer. prayer to St. Joseph. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our tribulation, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. Through that charity which bound you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and through the paternal love with which you embrace the child Jesus, we humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ has purchased by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, Ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. O oh, our most mighty protector, be kind to us, and from heaven assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. As you once, once rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield to each one of us by your constant protection so that supported by your example and your aid, we may be able to live piously, to die in holiness, and to obtain eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. Now we turn to the great prayer, the litany of the saints. And St. John Neumann, it's feast day we celebrate today. Pray for us. Who had a part to play in the proclamation by the Holy Father of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. And so we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgin, pray for us. And Saint Michael, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Raphael, pray for us. All you holy angels and archangels, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. All you holy patriarchs and prophets, pray for us. Saint Peter, pray for us. Saint Paul, Pray for us. St. Andrew. Pray for us. St. James. Pray for us. St. John. Pray for us. St. Thomas. Pray for us. St. James. Pray for us. St. Philip. Pray for us. St. Bartholomew. Pray for us. St. Matthew. Pray for us. St. Simon. Pray for us. St. Jude. Pray for us. St. Matthias. Pray for us. St. Barnabas. Pray for us. St. Luke. Pray for us. St. Mark. Pray for us. All you holy apostles and evangelists. Pray for us. All you holy disciples of the Lord. Pray for us. St. Stephen. Pray for us. St. Lawrence. Pray for us. St. Vincent. Pray for us. Saints Fabian and Sebastian. Pray for us. Saints John and Paul. Pray for us. Saints Cosmos and Damien. Pray for us. All you holy martyrs. Pray for us. Saint Sylvester. Pray for us. Saint Gregory. 
Pray for us. Saint Ambrose. Pray for us. Saint Augustine. Pray for us. Saint Jerome. Pray for us. Saint Martin. Pray for us. Saint Nicholas. Pray for us. Saint John Neumann. Pray for us. All you holy bishops and confessors. Pray for us. All you holy doctors. Pray for us. Saint Anthony. Pray for us. Saint Benedict. Pray for us. Saint Bernard. Pray for us. Saint Dominic. Pray for us. Saint Francis. Pray for us. Saint Pio. Pray for us. All you holy priests and Levites. Pray for us. All you holy monks and hermits. Pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us. Saint Agatha. Pray for us. Saint Lucy. Pray for us. Saint Agnes. Pray for us. Saint Cecilia. Pray for us. Saint Anastasia. Pray for us. Saint Catherine. Pray for us. Saint Claire. Pray for us. Saint Elizabeth. Pray for us. Saint Faustina. Pray for us. All you holy virgins and widows. Pray for us. All you holy saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, save your people. From all evil. Lord, save your people. From all sin. Lord, save your people. From your wrath. Lord, save your people. From a sudden and unprovided death. Lord, save your people. From the snares of the devil. Lord, save your people. From anger, hatred, and all ill will. Lord, save your people. From the spirit of uncleanness. Lord, save your people. From lightning and tempest. Lord, save your people. From the scourge of earthquake. Lord, save your people. From plague, famine, and war. Lord, save your people. From everlasting death. Lord, save your people. By the mystery of your holy incarnation. Lord, save your people. By your coming. Lord, save your people. By your birth. Lord, save your people. By your baptism and holy fasting. Lord, save your people. By your cross and passion. Lord, save your people. By your death and burial. Lord, save your people. By your holy resurrection. Lord, save your people. By your wonderful ascension. Lord, save your people. By the coming of the Holy Spirit. Lord, save your people. On the day of judgment. Lord, save your people. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, hear our prayer. That you will spare us. Lord, hear our prayer. That you will pardon us. Lord, hear our prayer. That it may please you to bring us to true penance. Lord, hear our prayer. Guide and protect your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Preserve in holy religion the Pope and all those in holy orders. Lord, hear our prayer. Humble the enemies of holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Give peace and unity to the whole Christian people. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring back to the unity of the church all those who are straying and bring all unbelievers to the light of the gospel. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen and preserve us in your holy service. Lord, hear our prayer. Raise our minds to desire the things of heaven. Lord, hear our prayer. Reward all our benefactors with eternal blessings. Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver our souls from eternal damnation and the souls of our brethren, relatives, and benefactors. Lord, hear our prayer. Give and preserve the fruits of the earth. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant eternal rest to all the faithful departed. Lord, hear our prayer. That it may please you to hear and heed us, Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. 
Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of, the, of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the Master said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. Thank you, Evan. Thanks, ladies. Okay, with that, now we turn to the Chaplet of Mercy given to us in September of 1935. Attached with so many incredible promises whenever we say this prayer at the bedside of someone who is sick or dying. The Lord promises to be there with them, not as a just judge, but as a merciful Savior. How powerful is that? We've heard so many stories. If a sinner would pray it just once, he would be given the grace of conversion. When we pray it, when there are storms, they will cease. And every time we pray it, the Lord promises that mankind is brought closer to his merciful heart. And so before we do that, we're going to incorporate the novena that the Lord requested St. Faustina to make in preparation for the Feast of Mercy. And today we are on day five. And Helen will share that with us. Today, bring to me the souls of those who have separated themselves from the church. Most merciful Jesus, goodness itself. You do not refuse light to those who seek it of you. Receive into the abode of your most compassionate heart the souls of those who have separated themselves from your church. Draw them by your light into the unity of the church and do not let them escape from the abode of your most compassionate heart, but bring it about that they too come to glorify the generosity of your mercy. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon the souls of those who have separated themselves from your son's church, who have squandered your blessings and misused your graces by obstinately persisting in their errors. Do not look upon them. Cleave me. Right. along their errors, but upon the love of your own son and upon his bitter passion, which he underwent for their sake, since they too are enclosed in his most compassionate heart. Bring it about that they also may glorify your great mercy for endless ages. Amen. Prayers of the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Okay, Petra, are you there? Oh, oh I, I thought I was the second one. Got it. <laughs> okay. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have 
have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful path. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God. Ed, we have one. We have one more decade. You jumped in early. Yeah. That's okay. Joan and I will do it. Yeah. Somebody didn't jump in, so I did it. Yeah. No problem. I think Diana lost internet. Okay. Eternal Father, uh, yeah. we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world holy, holy god, god holy, holy mighty holy one holy immortal one, one. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And that concludes the, the chaplet of divine mercy, and it's become customary to pray this prayer that comes uh, also from the diary of St. Faustina. Eternal God, in, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence Submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we'll conclude with the prayer of Our Lady of America given to um, Sister Maria Ephraim. Sorry.
Christ and uh, by Mary Ephraim, by Our Lady of America herself. The 1950s. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Prayer to Our Lady of America. O oh, Immaculate Mother, Queen of our country, open our hearts, our homes, and our land to the coming of Jesus, your divine Son. With him, reign over us, O oh, Heavenly Lady, so pure and so bright with the radiance of God's light shining in and about you. Be our leader against the powers of evil set upon rusting the world of souls, redeemed at such a great cost by the sufferings of your son and of yourself. In union with him from that same savior who loves us with infinite charity. We gather about you, O chaste and holy mother, virgin immaculate, patroness of our beloved land, determined to fight under your banner of holy purity against the wickedness that would make all the world an abyss of evil without God and without your loving In union with him for Oh, I think we lost. She's had, uh, are you there, Mary Jane? She might have, she might be having internet. There yes. she is. Here she's back. Hold on, please. Are you back, Mary Jane? I can finish. Go ahead, Evan. Okay. We consecrate our hearts our homes, our land, to your most pure heart, O great queen, that the kingdom of your son, our, our redeemer and our God may be firmly established in us. We ask no special sign of you, sweet mother, for we believe in your great love for us and we place in you our entire confidence we promise to honor you by faith, love, and the purity of our lives according to your desire. Reign over us then, O Virgin Immaculate, with your Son, Jesus Christ, may his divine heart and your most chaste heart be ever enthroned and glorified among us. Use us, your children of America, as your instruments in bereaving peace among men and nations. Work your miracles of grace in us so that we may be a glory to the blessed Trinity who create, redeemed, and sacrifice us. May your fit Filling spouse, Saint Joseph, with the holy angels and saints, assist you and us in renewing the faith of the earth. Yeah. Then, when our work is over, come, holy immaculate mother, and as our victorious queen, lead us to, to the eternal kingdom where your son reigns forever as king. Amen. Job. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Thank you all. So as we come to the conclusion of this time of adoration again, we say, Jesus said, for two or more gathered in his name, he will be there. So Jesus we just come before you and place our trust in you. We praise the name of Jesus above all names. We thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth, for saving humankind. We praise you and worship you, Savior of us all. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, Jamie.
Sanctum ergo sacramentum, venere mocer nui, et antiquum documentum, Restet fides supplementum, sensum defectu vi. Genitori, genitoque, lasset jubilatio. Salum sonor virtus quoque, sit et benedictio, procedenti abutroque, um parsit laudatio. Thank you, Lord. I got bless all the people in the chapel now. Normally, you might have seen some people walking around. It's just after midnight between first Friday and first Saturday, and they, they have a, 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 a nightly vigil. So sometimes we tune in and uh, you can hear them singing. You can hear them praying. Um, it's so beautiful to be united with them. All before our Lord. Okay, Ted, golly, I'll turn it back over to you and uh, tell us what you think you weren't able to tell us before that we should know. Tell us about your book, where they can get your book. Well, it's available at the website sign.org, which the name of our apostolate is Signs and Wonders for Our Time, but our website is sign.org. And um, if you want a copy, you can get it there. The book is actually 324 pages. And that's good. Um, uh, that's a good friend of ours. I don't know if anybody knew him. He was a former heroin addict for 11 years of people looking at the screen, Father Ron Stone. He was a volunteer with us five years before he entered the seminary. And uh, it's one of the most remarkable stories of grace I've ever heard. And Ron, having been a bodybuilder, uh, a bouncer in a bar for many years, uh, a, a literally a heroin addict who attempted to, to take his own life, his salvation came from the fact of the Eucharist. Ron liked to read. Uh, he uh, was a high school graduate, and he liked to read. Um, never went beyond high school until he got to the seminary. And it shows the importance of reading quality literature and his transformation in his life actually took place. It's, it's the story that's on the website right there now, sign.org, the father uh, Ron Stone story. And he just died literally from the time he told us he was ill, he, he had died. It was only three weeks later he passed. Um, and, it's, and he was our kind of our go-to priest. He probably took 15 vacations in our basement uh <laughs> wherever he was stationed as a priest he would always like to, he had a lot of friends up here because he lived here he went to high school here and uh but anyway it, it, it i've known i've known ron 35 years up until he just passed december 8th on, on the feast wow. of the immaculate conception and you want to talk about a conversion I'd known him 35 years and I've never heard him anything ever say anything negative about anybody. I mean, he would talk about something observationally, wouldn't be that naive. But on the other hand, he said, who am I to criticize somebody when I was a heroin addict for the, the best part of my adult life? Oh. You know? And so there's a lesson in that for all of us on a conversion. You know, you worry about yourself first. And, you know, he would stay here at the house and, you know, he would get up every single day he was here. He would leave the house by no later than 530. It would, no matter what time of the year it was, he would go out and find a place to walk, pray, say his rosary. 
and he would read his breviary somewhere, or if he was here many times, he'd find a place to say mass. And then because he was up so early, he would come back for a nap. But it's a tremendous testimony of grace. It's really divine mercy. That God, had, had you ever met him, Joan and David? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Father Ron, pray for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Sorry for your loss. Your good friend. Yeah. And, you know, anytime we needed a mass said, you know, we were such good friends, he would always just say a mass literally the first time it was available and, and sometimes even move things, you know. Mm -hmm. what, what, what would you like to address or if anybody's got a thought, you know, because I could, you know, I don't yeah. know. Where Why don't we turn it over? I, I think you covered the, the main things. Um... And if uh, if you've signed on, you know, later and you missed uh, the excellent uh, uh, words from uh, Ted Flynn at the beginning, uh, you can uh, find us on YouTube. Find we'll, This will be posted probably in a couple hours at the Divine Mercy for America YouTube channel, also on Rumble, Divine Mercy for America. And if uh, if someone sends you the link or, or something, you can uh, sign up at DivineMercyForAmerica.org and click on the membership tab to get this uh, Zoom link. We'll send it out because we do this from the first through the ninth of, of every month, and we have uh, guest speakers and uh, the Holy Hour time of prayer. I have a question. Janice? I a question. Yes. I was just wondering, Ted, if you've ever heard of the revelations to St. Bridget of Sweden by our Lord and Our Lady? I, I know the name St. Bridget of Sweden well. I mean, I've heard it many, many times, but I couldn't tell you really what she said other than, you know, from St. Bridget of Sweden to St. Bridget, the patron saint of Ireland. I really couldn't tell you exactly what hers were, other than the fact I knew that the, she is a saint and her, her visions and prophecies were very profound. That's all I know. My daughter-in-law and I found this, um, it's prayers that you can say. Um, there's a devotion for one year. It's 15 prayers a day or there's a devotion for 12 years and it's seven prayers a day. And Don and I've been saying it and it's, it's, it's just really, it's beautiful. And then part of this, it says, I re Jesus received 5,475 blows upon my body. If you wish to honor them in some way, recite 15 Our Fathers and 15 Hail Marys with the following prayers, which I myself teach you for an entire year. When the year is finished, you will have honored each of my wounds. And Don and I've been saying it now for five days, and it's, it's just really remarkable. And I didn't know if anybody might want to look into it. Um, I couldn't figure out how to get it on on the the Zoom, but um, Don sent me um, this website. It's called. I don't know if you can see it. You you can look it up. The Saint Bridget prayers. I want to kind of yeah. Kinda, it's yeah. Saint Bridget's twelve years prayer devotion. Right. Yeah. It's very powerful. It's very beautiful. It is. Yeah. It's Thank you, Janice. Powerful. Thank you. I want to kind of try to, we have Ted uh, very special today. So if I want to, uh, thanks. We, I told you yesterday, yeah, Janice, that you could share it with us today. So thank you. If you guys want to look it up, St. Bridget Prayers, if you if you can fit it in, add it to your prayer life. Powerful. Um, so anything specific for, for Ted, since we're we don't have him very often. Yes, Christine. Thank you. Question. You have to unmute. Okay. Yes. Um, I have to say that um, there's a lot of talk here in our prayer groups about Gara Vandell and at the Shrine Our Lady of the Island. She did, Conchita was there. Um, someone said to me, do you know who was standing next to you? Because I 
I volunteered the gift shop. I said, no. And she says, Conchita was standing next to you. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that's amazing. <laughs> I didn't even know she's so humble. Um, but when I uh, was, when I uh, was, uh, I also sometimes um, join in with the True Life in God uh, prayer group. And um, they, in one of the messages there to uh, Vasula, um, the, the visions of Garabandel in, the, in that message, it said they are true. And so it was very important that I thought to bring that up too, that other, other uh, visionaries are also um, saying that Garabandel is true. Uh, from their messages. So um, it's too much of a coincidence for me. I think that's that was divinely meant to be brought up. Yeah, well, I, just, I got here to, to Georgia from uh, from New York. I'm in Georgia now in it, it you know, in a little place called uh, Brazelton. And so I got the courage the brazenness to say something about it. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm here. But- well, uh, Garib Mandal has had many, many, many supporters. We know that Padre Pio was very, I have a very large section. Uh, the book is 324 pages, including all front back matter, index, bibliography, footnotes, et cetera. But the actual text of the narrative is 262, and there's probably about three or four pages on what Padre Pio believed in it and the deference that he actually dealt with Conchita. Um, even, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, in, in the Italian custom, when, when a man dies, they put like the equivalent of like a doily on his head. And he asked that that doily upon his burial be given to Conchita. So we know that he very much believed in it. And there's a lot of history on that to anybody who's ever followed it. Also, the same as with Mother Teresa, uh, John Paul II, Pius IX, Pius XII, um, Pius, uh, Pope Paul VI said it's really the greatest story since resurrection. I mean, this is an amazing thing to say of how much he believed it. And, and is, it's never been condemned. Garabandal has never been approved because there's things yet to happen. And I don't think the church, the church should approve it before the events come to pass or don't come to pass. And I think that's the prudence of the church when it comes to a lot of this. On the other hand, they could investigate some of this more vigorously that's happening around the world, but they don't. But Garabandal, I think, has been protected by many people in the clergy that in very ranking positions from cardinals, bishops. And that's why there's never been a negative declaration, which is very, very positive. I have a, a hypothesis that maybe a synod with the um, Orthodox church is, uh, is in the work somewhere. I know that Pope John Paul II was trying to accomplish something with them. And we, uh, we know that um, with True Life in God, one of the main um, prayers that the Lord promised would be that, uh, uh, that we would celebrate Easter on the same day. And I'm hoping that that has a connection with Garabandel and the and that that's that's uh, that's what I think is going is that would be kind of a miracle. <laughs> well, it's know. interesting you say that because Conchita used the word at the time of the miracle there would be a reunification. She didn't say a reunification of what, but it's very very interesting. I mean, this is part of my deep dive in this. If you look at the church splitting in 1054. The original day of when the church, the East and the West split, do you know the day that that was actually signed? July 16th, the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which is the big day for Medjugorje. It's actually amazing to, to, that the church officially split when the day the document was signed was 10, July 16th. So, you know, whether or not it's the reunification of 
of the Protestants or the, or the East and the West. It would be an easier thing, I think, for the for the Eastern Church to reunite with the West, the Western right, uh, than it would be for the um, for the Protestants to reunite with the Catholics, especially if it involves Mary. But we know that it's going to be so supernatural. The Blessed Mother said the human mind cannot even comprehend what is coming. You know, but it's um Pope John Paul II said he had three goals for his pontificate. And the one that he said he failed in was that the, you know, th that the church in America would, would be reformed. But the other one he said was that he had a goal that the, the church would breathe again with two lungs, the East and the West. And it's kind of interesting, frankly, that Pope Francis only has one lung that's operational. So you have read or you've, I haven't heard that there is going to be a synod with the Eastern, with the Eastern church, the Orthodox. No, I didn't say that. I said that it was a hypothesis. It was uh, maybe a, a surmising from everything. I'm not saying that that's true. Oh. I'm just saying that it's a, that, you know, it's a hope and it's a hypothesis because I know that that John, St. John Paul II tried to accomplish something there. And he did meet with them several times. So I don't know, but I'm just hoping. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, I have that in the book about the Eastern Church also with the Protestants. And it, it obviously can't be the Muslims because there was never a uniting of that faith with, with Christianity. It was never united. So to, to mean the word reunification was used by Conchita, it means at some point there was a split. We couple questions. Um, uh, Irene's asking, can you talk about the healings that Our Lady promised to all those who are present or who see the miracle? Big, big deal. One of the make, great, great promises of Garabandal. All who go, and there's speculation going again, I stuck specifically to the messages of 2,000 messages that were actually given, but there's major ones um, at Garabandal. But one major, major message, not getting into true life in God or Vasula or anybody else, because I had, because there's so much out there with all of these other visionaries, I decided to stay away from that because there was no beginning nor no end of, 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 of what I include or what I exclude. And Garabandal to me is, is going to live or die on its own. Now I've devoted a lot of my life to just doing this. I've been living the life, not necessarily of a hermit, but very reclusive over the last 12 months to finish this book of something that I've been involved with 40 years and have written 500 pages on this previously. So I'm very familiar with the subject, but this is a major, major promise. And this is part of the message of hope. All who go to the site of Garabandal at the time of the miracle will be healed. Now, what a promise. Think of somebody with a terminal disease. Somebody, somebody who's in a wheelchair, an aqua lung, whatever, um, spina bifida, tr uh, you know, very terminal situation with any disease. All who go there will be healed. And now that's how things will go all around the world immediately, because it's kind of like the man at the pool of Bethesda, where all of us, who can deny that he had been there for a long time before he was healed, but yet he walked away healed, so nobody could deny it. So this is one of the great promises of the miracle, all who go there. Now, on the other hand, in 1994, when I was in Conchita's brother's home and in Garabadal, his name was Seraphim. Um, he, I asked him about that, and he said, at the time of the miracle, and this is now a personal story to me, and, and literally where my wife and my um, uh, my wife's parents were there in this house. We, we sought him out there. He said, at the time of the miracle, it, now I'll go back to 1994, he said it would be very hard to get there. 
Now, you know, it would have been harder then to figure that out. We've just seen a pandemic where there's all sort of restrictions on flying and movement, whether it's a war, whether it's fuel, whether it's something to do with airlines or borders or whatever it is. So it's easier now in light of just having COVID and potentially something into the future, like maybe central bank digital currency or some sort of digital ID, which the European Union voted on two months ago, or the nations in the European Union voted in favor of having some form of digital ID. And that's going to be tied into an environmental score, a climate score of how good a person we've been vis-a-vis -vis how the state will view us and a lot of that data is readily available on every single person listening to this right now through artificial intelligence. Wow. But in the question you asked, Joan, that's a very, very significant part of the miracle. All Can you imagine, you know, anybody who's been there, it's a natural amphitheater. Five million people could look down on those nine pines from all the way around which is think of a monstrous, monstrous football field or soccer field with elevated stands because it's all mountainous. And so, millions and millions of people could look down on the nine pines in, in, in that little space there. So Yogi asked a good question too. She said, um, so when should we go to Garabundal? And I'll kind of tag along to that. You don't have to, I mean, the miracle will happen and then people will be able to continue to come. Is that right? I mean, the miracle is going to just be there till the end of time? Well, it's not the miracle. You know, it, there's going to be something called a permanent sign. And this is where I don't get into any conjecture other than exactly what was said. Malachi Martin said something to me in 1992 when he came to visit me. He said exactly, and he was a very, very big fan of Garabandal. He said, when these events happen, and he was a big, big, big Fatima person, as we know, they're going to happen exactly as they said they would, but not necessarily like we perceive in our own mind. So, you know, what will exactly happen there? You know, the synod possibly, okay, possibly is a Eastern right. It, it could be up because we just don't know what heaven's going to do, but it's going to be exactly as heaven said. So when do people go? They can go, you know, you can go, anybody can book a flight now. I mean, the last time I was there, we, we went for the 100th anniversary of Fatima, and we went from Lisbon to Fatima, to Nazare, to, to Santiago, Santander, and then to Garabandal. And then we we ended up our trip in Lord and came home, which was about 10 days, 10, 12 days. And so anybody can go to Garabandal any day, but I think the question or any time, but I think the question that really they're asking is how will we know? We're gonna to be told we it's in the months of March, April, May, or June. My guess is it's April, May for a lot of reasons, maybe even with weather. It is in the mountains of the Cantabrian Mountains in northern Spain. March would be very, very cold there, but it's going to be miraculous. I mean, you know, you had two million people leaving Egypt, you know, going to the promised land. And then all of a sudden, manna started falling from the sky and then quail. So they had enough for the Sabbath and they weren't supposed to pick more than they should have or, or it rotted. So it's going to be so miraculous. But we know Conchita is going to announce it. So if we know uh, the warning has happened, think of a play that has three acts and they're all part of the same play. And, you know, two follows one and three follows two. It's contiguous as part of a play. Once the first sign is once the warning happens, then we know the clock starts ticking. And once that clock starts ticking, we, and then if, if nothing happens with Conchita Mar mentioning eight days in advance for March, then we know we'll be on guard for April. And you could be looking at flights or whatever and making a reservation or whatever, because we know it's between the months of the days of the 8th and 16th of the given month.
so people could reserve flights and they could play it that way. How they're going to get there is a whole nother thing. They're going to have to figure out from their locale. If anybody here is from California, it's just going to be a longer flight. So then at that point, Conchita announces it. And so it's a sequential process. March goes and nothing happens. Then we're into April. Then nothing happens in April. Now you're probably, you know, you're going to be looking at May and the chances are increase, increasing tremendously. If nothing happens in May, now you've got a given for June. You know, so, you know, and then word will, word will be all, all around this. I mean, we're personally going to have a, a section absolutely dedicated on our website to this, and we've talked about it for years and years. There's also something, I don't think if you look at the, the, the entire corpus of the body of the messages here. We still have a way to go. There's some still some prophecies that have to be fulfilled. Mary Lowley always talked about near the time of the events, communism would be throughout the world. Priests would have a difficult time saying masses, and there would be persecution of priests saying masses. And think of communism, people look at communism and whether it's the Soviet Union under Lenin, Stalin, or anybody else that it was very, very violent or under the 50 million that Mao killed where it was violent. In political philosophy, you've got fascism, socialism, communism, and many other types of isms that, that have to do with the politics. Communism in political philosophy just simply is a world without God. It doesn't necessarily have to be, be violent. And if you look at the evolution of the way the United States has gone over the last few 50 years, we have incrementally been administratively through legislation been removing God from our culture. We're going more communist. The, the people by and large that are right now running many, many portions in government they're actually communists. They're not socialists. They're actually communists. They don't want God in our culture whatsoever. They want him removed. And when we're a nation with our laws that we've been looking at over the last decades, look at how far we've drifted. Now we have some people in, you know, in their 50s, 60s, and 70s on this. All they've got to do is look back when they were young to see the way the country was. We're nowhere near that today. Politically, we have morphed incrementally through legislation and administration and government to removing God from our culture. And the first major step in that whole process was removing the Bible and prayer by the order of the Supreme Court of the United States in 1962 and 1963 from the classroom. And look just since that those years in the 60s, how far we've drifted from God. I believe the blessing was taken off America when we removed God from the classroom. I'm that resolute how big that of those two events were and, and, and the destiny of the United States and the life that we're living now. And personally, I think it's going to take violence in our culture to bring prayer back in. It's going so, to Ted, yeah, you started to say that um, there were certain prophecies that hadn't been fulfilled yet. Uh, one is that communism would spread. I think it has all over the world. I mean, it's godlessness all over the place. Um, for the most part, our, our society is very pagan. What are some of the others? Well, we haven't seen we haven't seen the fulfillment yet of the synod that the, the events would happen after a synod, but we know we're getting close. The Pope hasn't gone to Moscow just yet. Now, on the Moscow prophecy, it's a fascinating story. Uh, you know, everybody was expecting the Pope to go to Moscow, and there was a great buzz just a couple of months ago when the Pope went to Mongolia. Now, the Pope, there's, there's a total of 1,450 Catholics in Mongolia. The, you know, there are more in a Sunday mass where I go to mass on Sunday than 1,400 people. It's one of the largest parishes in Virginia where I go. And so yet the Pope is making a trip. He, he used the Moscow trip as a pretense to go. 
We also haven't, so that hasn't happened yet. And that's when the Soviet Union runs across Europe, according to the prophecy. And, you know, that's very, very possible. I mean, Europe is unable to defend itself against the Soviet army, which the Soviets span 11 time zones. I mean, if you look at Vladivostok to St. Petersburg, that's the distance in the east coast of the United States to Perth, Australia. That's all the way across the United States, all the way across the Pacific, and all of the way across Australia from Sydney to Perth. So, you know, this is a very powerful army, and it's a very large army, and, it, and, and Europe, frankly, is defenseless right now. And they basically have been running out of all of their own armaments by pushing everything to the Ukraine. So we, in essence, have a world war. We have 30 major NATO nations. We have right now Iran very much cooperating with equipment and drone technology, giving it to Russia. We have China helping Russia. We have the United States helping the Ukraine and the NATO nations. And we're bankrupting ourselves to do this. And meanwhile, we have a lot of internal problems in the United States. So we're going, frankly, more like Rome, where Rome in the end, uh, they were so dispersed through the rest of the world with their army, they were broken. They ended up paying their own soldiers in lead. That's all they could pay them with. They were broke and they basically walked home and paid them in lead. So the United States is going a lot like other major empires in the world in, in, in its very discernible process with our spiral south of how things are going. But there, um, are we going to see a reunification of the East and West? Very, very possible. So the point is, is that we can see elements of these prophecies very much coming into fruition. On the Moscow prophecy, only one person, it wasn't Conchita who gave this as a public message. She gave this message on the last the day after the last apparition in November 14th, 1965, at her kitchen room table, where um, a man by the name of Albrecht Weber, who was an Austrian, he's, he, he talk about him as a German, he's German-Austrian, he was very much devoted to Garabandal, he lived there, He's buried there, and he wrote a book called uh, Garabandal, The Finger of God, in German in 1992. That was translated into English, and then he revised the book in the year 2000. Yet something beyond odd, it's actually bizarre. Albrecht Weber, who was the recipient of this prophecy, never put that in his book. It's told verbally. Mm. Is it, I mean, if you, would, if you had heard that and you wrote a book on Garabadal, would you put it in the book? Mm -hmm. So there's been speculation that possibly one of the visionaries asked him not to do it. And this gets back to the anecdotal stories that are fairly significant around the Garabandal story, per what was originally said in 1961 to four young girls. Now, there was also the prophecy... <clears throat> Conchita heard the word schism. Now think of a 12, 13, 14-year-old girl who is brought up in a mountain village. Very, very simple. How many young kids would ever know what a schism was? And so her brother asked her, uh, you know, what, what this was about. And she, she just simply said there would be a schism. Now, anybody now paying attention to what's going on right now in the United States and the world of what's happening with clergy, we are literally looking right before our very eyes every single day that we're seeing a key to Japan where cardinal against cardinal, bishop against bishop, priest against priest, confrere opposing confrere we're seeing a tremendous rift in clergy to where people are saying some very profound things against 
Pope Francis against Curia, against cardinals, that was unheard of in previous generations for leading hierarchy to speak against each other like this. And we have Byzantine bishops back to Eastern Rite or, or Orthodox, the bishop, the Byzantine Council of the World has publicly come against Francis in open letters. Greek Orthodox have done the same, that they can no longer go along with this kind of behavior. So this isn't so much an opinion of mine right now as much as all of this data is definitely out in front of us to observe it as true without even forming an opinion one way or the other or me taking a side on it. What I did in the book is I present both sides of everything that's going on, the Moscow prophecy, the word schism, and it, there are many, many people like Cardinal Muller, Cardinal Pell, you know, because Francis said he doesn't want a new church, he wants a different church. You know, Peter Seewald, who wrote a, um, a biography of Francis, we have open dissent right now in the hierarchy like we have never had before, maybe in church history, that's open. And, and more of that is very, very visible because of the types of communication that we have today through the internet and every sort of media and medium, medium known to man. So but we, what we can now see clearly is that we have great division and confusion. It's impossible to argue with that if anybody's watching the news. Amen. Yeah. And it's going, it's going to increase. So what happens if something comes out where the synodal document, which the name of the document is actually called Instrumentum Laborious. That's actually the name of the synodal document. And you have cardinals saying, you know, we had the dubia, that, that spoke against this. We now have uh, Cardinal Burke, who is in essence had his meeting just last week with the Pope where he had been stripped of his position in the signatura for his views against Francis. Um, and then he was made the head of Malta and he was removed of that. And about three weeks ago, give or take, he was just had his apartment and his stipend removed in Rome and his pay removed in Rome. And then he just met with the Pope a few a week or two ago, uh, I guess a week or less. Mm -hmm. And his comment was, well, at least I'm alive. Right. Now, this, well, is a, this is literally a cardinal who's head of the Supreme Court called the Signatura of the Vatican itself. So no matter what, for people following the news, these are really, really, really very much newsworthy events of what's going on in the church. Right. Well, you you made the point also, there's talk about uh, the four more popes or three popes, three or four popes. There's right. confusion in that. I have a section in the book and it's real. It's called areas of concern and confusion. And that ties into that. At, and I list all of the popes the day that they were elected as pope, not their birth, but the day that they were elected as pope and the day they died, you know, all of the way from John the 23rd to Paul the 6th. Um, and, and these events happened, you know, uh, um, with Paul the 6th by and large. And then you had um, John Paul I, John Paul II, Benedict. And so at one time, Conchita used the word, and it's 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 unavoidable to say that it's not true because I have the even the transcripts when she said it and where she said it and who she said it to. Once she said three more popes, and then the key phrase of why it can be right in any direction you say, the key phrase after that is then el fin de los tiempos, which means and then the end of times. So even if, if the end, whether it was three or, or, and then it was Benedict or rather it was four and then Francis from when it was said, they could both be right because it didn't say there would be the end of the papacy. It said it would be 
uh, than the El Fin de los Tiempos. So either Pope could have been the end time Pope and still the prophecy could be through true, whether it was three or four. So if you look at this, frankly, like an engineering document of where what was said, then exactly how it should happen, you don't know. But if you look at what it was said and what could happen, more like a lawyer, you can see it could have been it could have been Benedict or it could be Francis as the end time pope and it can still be correct. It's a very important part of it because many people have fallen away specifically. It was also said that Joey Lomangino, for those that don't know who Joey was, he was called the blind apostle of Garabandal. He was a New York um, man who had worked in his father's shop. And when he was working on a tire, when he blew it up, the rim came out and hit him on, on the nose uh, and it hit his olfactory nerve. And then um, olfactory's eyes, right? It's not smell. Which one's, which one's eyes? I always forget that. I don't know, but Maybe. the eyes. Okay. Yeah, the eyes. <laughs> he went okay. blind. He became blind. <laughs> he became blind. Yeah. I always forget <clears throat> which one smell. Anyway, so um, he, um, he was supposed to receive his sight at the time of the miracle, and he never did. Now, there is no question whatsoever, many people fell away after Joey died. I have a very good friend who every single person on this screen right now knows who he is. And he specifically told me the other day he fell away when Joey died because it, it, it didn't happen as he thought. So, you know, it's an area of concern and confusion that is real. But on the other hand, Conchita said at another time, and when, and when you look at all of this material, all page after page on just Garabandal and what was said, it frankly takes your breath away because you can see how true it is and how heaven uses language that is very, very measured and very, very precise. But Conchita said at one point, she said, um, the people would not fall away uh, because of the time that it would take to get to the miracle. But she said they would fall away more because of events. And, you know, she also said, don't, don't, don't interfere with the church's movement on this. Let the Holy Spirit and let God move. Let the church move with God's direction with these events. So there's another question, a uh, quick one on um, that Conchita, Conchita would have to be alive to give the, the eight day notice. And of course, I'm... Um, and she's, what, is she about in her early 70s, 73 or Well, so? I can tell you precisely, she turned 70 because I, I've, I've been around this, I say, 40 years. She turned 75 next month. Okay. So, yeah, and, and if she ever dies and this doesn't happen, in my opinion, Garabandal's over. Okay. And like, it's going to be something so miraculous that the Holy Spirit does, like parting the Red Sea or something, you know, and, and then... You know, it, it's so fantastically large, but it still becomes true. But Conchita is the one designated by the Blessed Mother to announce it eight days in advance. And let's face it, when you're at 75, it's not like you're 25. You know, so will these things be soon? Yeah. I mean, I've given a good portion of my life just in the, la uh, the whole last year, but have been around this and written many, many articles and, and chapters and books on different aspects of this. So yeah, I believe it. I think it's true. I believe it's true. I want it to be true because it's so much hope for mankind. Can you imagine if millions of people bring loved ones uh, that doubt uh, or healed of what that will do to people's faith? And the miracle, another thing about the miracle, it has never been seen in the history of the world. It's kind of like the Shekinah glory had never been seen till the Jews left, left Egypt in the desert. In the Shekinah, it became a pillar of smoke by day and a fire by night. And the Shekinah had never been seen before until then. And phonetically in English, it would be Shekinah. So 
uh, the Blessed Mother said, the miracle has never been be seen before in the history of the world, and it will not be explained by science. And back to phase two, or act two, the next after the warning is the miracle, and the one after that is the permanent sign. You will be able to see it, touch it, um, and, but, and you will be able to, you will be not be able to, to touch it. You'll be able to see it and photograph it. And that's similar to what she says in Medjugorje as well. It's very similar. You know, um, I, I've toyed with actually doing a pamphlet now, more, you know, 40, 50 page pamphlet of what was said at Medjugorje. Um, and I stayed away intentionally, I said, but I did put some stuff on Medjugorje in this. It, it, it concerns more than number 18, but there are a lot of similarities to a miracle and a permanent sign in Mariana giving uh, a notice to the world eight days in advance. So again, let's stay away from supposition, but stay with facts. Do we think they're probably related? They're probably not just cousins, they're probably brothers or sisters or brother and sister, they're that close. Because, but you can't say definitively they are. Mm -hmm. you no, know, at Apparition Hill, there's going to be a permanent sign. Mm -hmm. And we know there's going to be a permanent sign at Medjugorje. So, you know, there are tremendous similarities and it would make sense they're related. But I intentionally wanted to stay away that because Garabin from other apparitions, because I, I could have included a thousand pages of other things, but I did include people like St. Edmund Campione, Maria Speranza, Janie Garza, from uh, people who have spoken about a great day of light, Marie Julie Jehaney, who have spoken about, you know, where will we will see the state of our soul as God would judge it. These things are so fantastically big when I was doing that, what I call the data dump phase, I actually went to bed at night like my head was going to explode. There was just so much data that's really, really substantial to this story that you, the Blessed Mother said you can't comprehend it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, think, think if you were, you know, the most powerful army in the world. Uh, with, with Pharaoh was, was chasing some vagabond type people just leaving after 400 years of bondage with ox carts and basically wearing rags as slaves for 400 years. You know, how many generations at 15 years per generation is that of not having any possession or wealth? And then all of a sudden seeing a sea part you can't even fathom what that would be like to see it. And then when the, when the Egyptian army came after, they were swallowed up, you know, so it's going to be something so big, we can't comprehend it. Mm -hmm. That's my contention on the whole thing. And the Blessed Mother actually said so. It's not to be fully understood with our minds, which are finite. Right. And, it, you, and, and also the warning, you can, you, we will see it and we can feel it. It's in the interior of our soul, but we're going to see something as well. What that is, nobody knows. There's a little bit more data. There's a lot more data on the miracle than there is actually about the warning. We just know that the uh, it's going to happen. We don't know the year because it's not announced in advance, but we have a lot of data point on the uh, of what the miracle will be. All right, one more question. Go ahead. I could read some of those very, very quickly if you would like, because there's a lot of them. If, you, if you're tight on time, we could end it. But I could read to you what it will be. It's going to coincide with an event in the church where there would be the reunification of the Christians. Um, the description of a great event in the in the church is an exaggerated, poor translation of the original spoken by Conchita. It is incorrect to translate the phrase as a great event in the church. The actual phrase was in Spanish, a particular event or a specific event. 
It will be the greatest miracle ever performed by Jesus for the world. It is supernatural and has never been seen before and will not be explained by science. Padre Pio will see the miracle, even though he did before he died. The reigning pope will see the great miracle from wherever he is. Before the miracle, something will happen that will cause people to stop believing in Garabandal. That, to a certain degree, has already happened. But I think it's also something going to be more. And whether or not it's the Senate or the Pope going to Moscow or whatever. But because uh, Albrecht Weber, as I said, never mentioned that in his book. The miracle will occur on a Thursday evening at 8.30 p.m. Spanish time. It will happen between the dates of the 18th and the 16th, inclusive of those dates of March, April, May, or June. And according to Mary Lowley, the miracle will take place within one year after the warning. Now, this doesn't mean it has to happen in the same calendar year, but there are people who said it is more recent visionaries. I don't didn't get into that, and I don't really care, although I've heard those stories. And then, then there are also people lately, and, it, and the source of this is from Maria Sirocco, that it's in an even number year. The, 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 the answer to that is maybe yes, maybe no. But did she ever release it? But the people today in the very village of Garabandal don't believe she ever released that. It will only last about 15 minutes. It will be on the feast of a young Eucharistic martyr of the church. It will be seen in the sky. It will be possible to photograph and televise, but not touch. All those in the village and surrounding area mountains will see it. The sick who are present will be cured. Sinners and non-believers will be converted. The incredulous will believe. Now, here's a big one. Russia will be converted after the miracle. And the Blessed Mother said, and then all will love our hearts, the, mirac the Immaculate and Sacred Heart. Conchita, who knows the date of the great miracle, will, will announce it to the world eight days in advance. She said it will be supernatural. Uh, before the miracle, though, there'll be many reported apparitions throughout the world. She said this in December of 1962. And then, and then uh, the bishop, by the way, no bishop has ever condemned it. But there's a little bit more, but those are the highlights of, 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 the, of what the miracle will constitute. Thanks, Ted. Uh, Peter has his hand up. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Thank you so much. It's a great presentation. Uh, my grandson, Dean, just uh, asked, uh, made a great point. This is very similar to the movie Scrooge and what Ebenezer Scrooge went through as far as the information and how people are going to get become aware of um, their elimination of conscience. And so he made that correlation between the movie Scrooge and and what we're talking about tonight. Agree, and that's and Scrooge became a good man after that. Every there isn't any in, in instance of of the twenty plus people I've talked to that have literally approached me and said what it's been like. The stories are all the same, and in every instance, there's nothing been as big an event in their life. It's impossible to describe. They can't put words to it. And by and large, every person that I've spoken to has been become a much better person. So I guess that that's great. Dean, you're awesome, Dean. We love you. <laughs> what a great kid. Thank <laughs> you. Simple. Um, so I guess we can kind of wrap it up with that. I mean, isn't that what it's all about? And uh, Christine had asked, you know, is there anything about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart? So when you, if we leave, we see ourselves and we're all Scrooges, you know, unhappy, complaining, sinful, but we turn around, um, is, how is that connected with the triumph? Um, it's it, it, very possible an element, you know, I mean, I did a tape in 1997 called Key to the Triumph, which I often felt would be the proclamation of the dogma of co-redemptrix mediatrix advocate that the only person in the world who can actually proclaim a dogma 
uh, is the is the pope a reigning pope? And so, you know, will the world and will the pope and everybody else have the courage to proclaim the dogma of co-redemptrix? We know that the world will change with that. Um, again, you know, is it a is this an element of the triumph? And the answer is probably yes. Would I say most assuredly yes? I would not say that because then you get into more speculation. And I'm very loath to predict events based upon certain data. And that's why I, and I, I've, and there's a joke in my house. I mean, we're talking about this young kid talking about Scrooge, which by the way, that's a great grandfather with his great, with his grandson there. And it's a great grandson there listening to this, <laughs> you know, who, to bear through this. But <laughs> Um, we know that there's going to be some stupendous events coming our way. And, they're, they're, and, and this is the element that we're looking at. We're looking at an element of grace coming to the world that has, that's going to transform the world. And that's pretty significant. It's impossible to put words to what I think is going to be. I have some thoughts on what it could be. But you know, I I don't express those, yeah. and you know, it's the joke in the house that I'm that I'm never wrong, and, <laughs> and 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 the and the big joke is I don't guess dates, I I've, I don't guess dates. Everybody's putting dates to all this stuff, and I don't I don't guess dates. Why? And there are a lot of visionaries out there and people saying that with locutions and all. But I've been doing this now, been around this material for forty five years, and here's what I've seen. Everybody who puts a date on something specifically has been wrong. Mm -hmm. So therefore, let the Holy Spirit move. Now here, I've done just a book on a lot of this, but I'm just presenting a lot of the data that's been said by the Blessed Mother. Because you're never wrong when you quote her from authentic sites. Right, right. Okay, two two more questions, and guys, it's it's getting late. So um, Louise, who's who is paralyzed said um do you have to go there because it's it, it's difficult for people who who do suffer these ways anything ever said about other people being cured through through these experiences without having to be physically there in Gara Bandal? i don't know um i think through god's grace I'll, I'll give an opinion based upon god being merciful as he is that, you know, there's, you know, even in the church, there's baptism by desire, that if a person is absolutely due to some circumstance, not being able to go there, I would hope and pray that God's grace, especially if they're listening in, for instance, I'll tell you, you want to talk about the boldness of Mother Angelica, she, you know, when she was healed after 42 years of having braces on her legs, if anybody knows that story. She told me at my own kitchen room table, she came up to speak at the week of prayer and fasting and stayed with us for two nights and three days. And she told me at my kitchen room table in the year 2000 that she was going to ask Conchita for a day jump so she could get her camera crew there to film it before there would be problems with flights and a problem setting up in Garabandal. And anybody who ever knew Mother Angelica believes that story because that's her boldness. And, and after she was, act, that that is Mother Angelica's holy boldness to talk and act like that. And that's how she had the largest, you know, Catholic network in the world through that kind of nerve and holiness. And when Mother Angelica was healed, everybody knows she was devoted to many, many things, and especially the infant of Prague. Do you know the one place she went to give thanks of everywhere in the world? Garabandal. Can you imagine? Oh, that's of interesting. Everywhere, of everywhere in the world, she went to specifically give thanks. She went to Garabandal. That's interesting. Yep. There you go, Wheezy. All right. And now Evan's got a question. Uh-huh, Evan. I do. Um, I want to know about um the messages of violin from Alia now. Well, today we're talking, uh, th there were no messages at Our Lady of Knock. It was a silent apparition. Yeah, I know. Yes. 
Yes. And, so. I, and that was that was my question too about mm-hmm. yeah that I'm actually from Ireland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So actually, my question is, um, I've been playing all my life. I playing the rosary. Um, I'm in the, and I'm always doing the the first five Saturdays too, for you know reparation to her heart. My my question is, um, I want to see her triumph, and I really well, do. I think Amen. we all we all want to see the triumph, and we don't know. People, if you were to ask the average person what the triumph of the Immaculate Heart is, they really don't know. The Blessed Blessed Mother told us what the triumph is. The triumph of the Immaculate Heart, because she's always pointing to Jesus, is Jesus returning in glory. That's the triumph of the, her triumph is the triumph of Jesus. Okay. It's not what many people think a triumph is. It's Jesus actually, returning in glory. Actually, I did hear about a uh, cold. Actually, I did hear about a uh, cold. Um, I did hear one of your uh, messages um, about um, about the people that are, uh, you know, killing and destroying. Um, Mary did say in Fatima about that. The coming. Well, well, she spoke, but the, uh, the, uh, the main part of the body of message, would you say her name yes. was Evan? Yes. Evan. Um, the main body was about basically the violence that would bring uh, through the Bolshevik revolution and the Bolshevik, yeah. and the messages of Fatima took place before the, the October uprising of the Bolsheviks, which mm. the Bolshevik revolution, but and, and that's the violence that the Soviet Union or the yes, yes, that's right. brought to the world. Actually, I do have a personal, um, I, I have something to share um, before we go. Um, my grandparents fought in World War I and World War II. And that is at the same year when Mary appeared in 1917. Oh. Wow. Well, you know, it's um, Our Lady warned us. She warned us at Fatima. She warned yes. us in Bejo. She's warned us many, many times. She's warned us in Garabandal. You know, the thing we need to do is we focus on also how to be prepared for, for what is happening. And, yes. and, you know, we can worry about dates. We can worry about exactly the main things to do. What does Our Lady say? And these things will be given to us too. This knowledge we will... We will receive it if we're open to it. Mm-hmm. So do what you're doing, Evan. You're doing it. She I said, will. pray the rosary every day. She said, spend yes. time with the blessed sacrament. She said, go to confession every month regularly. And, mm-hmm. you know, live a simple life. Uh, pray, almsgiving, fasting. This is how yes. we prepare. And this is how our lady mm-hmm. will will lead us and guide us. And mm-hmm. so... um with that, I think it's exciting as uh, we are about, we should in our time, if if yes. uh, the children in Medjugorje, they say these things will happen in their lifetimes, the, the girls from Girl Bandal, um, mm-hmm. and we we need to be prepared, we need to share, we need to not fear, but glory, like like Ted's saying, we are on the verge of, of a new of a new era. world, right, Ted? Um, this is a new mystery. era, a new times, a new Jerusalem. A Jerusalem is a place, a new time is a spirit, and a new era is, is a point that we're in. Joan, I think what you just brought up is possibly the most important part of this entire time today. It's about living the messages. Uh, mm. Am I consumed at all by these messages? No. I'm very, very hopeful for the world that they will happen because of the pain and suffering that's going on in so many mm-hmm. families. I mean, let's face it, sex, drugs, and rock and roll have overtaken our culture to where it's decimating families. And so the, the major point of this whole thing is to live the messages. 
And when we're living them, everything else will fall in place. You just wrapped up which, the entire message of Garabandal. And to read more about it and to really study it, dive into it, uh, the name of the book is Garabandal, The Warning and the Miracle. Right, Ted? Yep. The Great Miracle. The Great Miracle. And, the, and the subtitle is The Divine Reset. Everybody's talking about a reset, a great reset in the secular press. This is heaven resetting on their terms. Right. This is a divine reset because the Blessed Mother said, right when it appears Satan is the victor, I shall snatch his victory away in a trice. First time I ever read the word trice, I thought it was it should have been thrice. Trice means quickly or instantaneously. So right when it appears Satan is the victor, heaven's going to step in just like it did at Lepanto and the siege of Vienna and other places. In the end, we win. And that's what's to remember. That's what's to give us the joy. That's what's to leave the fear. It's like your seat. It's football season now. You're sitting on the edge of your seat. And then all of a sudden, the last 30 seconds, you know, the whole game changes and we have a victor. It's it's what's going to happen. But in the meantime, we want to save as many souls. Souls are perishing. And this is where our prayers, our sacrifices can save them. And we have the conversions like Ted told us about earlier, um, a father stone, right? So, Just a personal note, Ted, I think your wife is married to someone similar to who I'm married to. What? So think about that one. Just I don't for, know. I don't know. People say I'm afraid of Maureen. That's not true. I'm, petri <laughs> I'm, I'm petrified. <laughs> Speaking of Maureen, she will be our guest speaker on Monday. I think it's Monday on the 8th um, to, to share with us about Our Lady of Pontmont. How, you know, she stopped the Prussians. She stopped the whole army from advancing. Our Lady did. It's incredible. And if these things that we're hearing about are so incredible, fabulous, fantastic, what could be in store in the future? Like we've been hearing things that we've never, ever seen before. I, I just can't wait. That's the beauty. That's the reason I'm excited, because it's a message of trust and hope. And that's the reason I've always been turned on by it. It's the that reason is... I've, I've always liked it. But I can tell you, when you see all of this in one place, it overwhelms you. It, it overwhelms you with joy and hope. Wow. Amen. Get Ted's book. Yeah. Go to sign.org. Yeah, go to sign.org. And, uh, and order his book and um, share it with others. Um, Learn more about it and do not fear. Be have you know, joyful expectation. Ted, we want to thank wow. you Beautiful. for all the Wonderful. time you've spent with Man. us today and in the past for all of the, the effort you've put into to this book, not just this book, going going back over the decades, the work that you and Maureen have done. You are a godsend, a blessing to the church, a blessing to us personally and to this group. So God bless you. And we will continue to pray for you and your family yes. because when you're, we're putting stuff out like this. We know that he doesn't like it. And oh, uh, no, no, there's obstacles. And the reason I've waited to do any of these is I needed because Satan creates impediments and obstacles. And I waited for the book to be printing. You're my first podcast on the book. Yes, you guys. Isn't that something we're honored. We're so honored. That's awesome. All right, y'all. Well, um, happy Friday, Ted. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank God you, bless Ted. you. Give a kiss to Maureen for us. Yes. Tell her we're looking Thank forward you. to see her on Monday. And hope to see you. We'll be in the D.C. area later in February. We'll get. All we'll right. Give us, a, give us an email in advance. And yeah, we will have to do dinner. Right. The, lady, the girls will, will be talking about that. Yeah. All right. We'll get together. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank, All right. You. All right. Thank you, nice. Ted. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jim, Dave. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Good night. Bye. Thanks, John and Dave and everybody. Bye -bye. You're welcome. See you all tomorrow. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for bye -bye. hanging out. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> mm -hmm.